Hello, it's Karen Squire Ryan here. Let's have a look around training.gov.au. Now, to start at training.gov.au, you type training.gov.au into your search engine, and when the training.gov.au website comes up, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Now, let's say that we wanted to look up training packages. We can type in to the search field training packages and oops enter sometimes it's trying to suggest something and when the next screen comes up it's a good idea to click current so select current you don't want to have old information showing that's not relevant anymore or that has been superseded and I've clicked the type of nationally recognized training as training package and I've clicked on current and then search and we see here that there are 37 training packages sometimes people ask me about how many training packages are there so you can always look on training.gov.au and you can see those training packages okay so we can see aero skills agriculture animal care meat processing automotive aviation business construction and all sorts of training packages arts defense electrical financial floristry foundation skills furnishing gas and hairdressing manufacturing maritime metals public sector pulp and paper resources retail sport training and and transport and logistics so if you wanted to start there you could if you had the name and code of a training package that you wanted to look up and you can't see it there, it might have been superseded. So you could click the superseded ones if you wanted to have a look at the history. But let's say that we decided that we wanted to look at the business services training package. Limit the search to only looking up training packages and only current. There's only one result, which is the business services training package. If I also wanted to look up all the qualifications that can be found within Business Services Training Package, I can click on that option, same with Units of Competency. But in this case, I'm just going to look up the Business Services Training Package. So looking up Business Services Training Package by clicking on it, this is a top-down search. And we see that the training package is called Business Services. It's up to release 8.0. So there's been seven previous little um, modifications. It supersedes a previous version and it's got the release um, dates in there. So you can see when the various releases were updated. It has what's called a companion volume implementation guide. Now every training package must have an implementation guide. So uh, one of the things that training package designers do is that they prepare companion volumes. Now a companion volume can really be anything. It can be some information about occupations, uh, it can be information about training plans and examples of resources, but it has to include an implementation guide. Everything else is optional in terms of companion volumes, but there must at the very least be one companion volume called implementation guide. So sometimes either term can be used. If someone says companion volume, they're probably talking about the implementation guide because that's the most common type of companion volume. So either term is okay. Probably the full word is better. Companion volume, comma, implementation guide. Now, each training package um, design team prepares a companion volume implementation guide, and all of those are found on VetNet. VetNet, and it will show you here they all are, and by clicking on them, you'll go to the companion volumes. Uh, if we were interested in looking at a qualification, we scroll down the training package 
screen and we see all the different qualifications. Now qualifications is a generic kind of term which describes units which when linked together give an outcome. So a certificate 1, 2, 3, 4, diploma, advanced diploma. They're the different sorts of qualifications that we usually come across in the world of VET. Not every training package has every qualification level. Some might not have any certificate ones. Some might not have any advanced diplomas. It's up to the designers to work out what goes in there. So here in this business services training package, we see that we've start, start from a certificate one in workplace skills and a certificate one is the lowest level and we go through to uh, a graduate diploma or more typically what we would look at would be an advanced diploma of say leadership and management or work health and safety. So by clicking on those we, we find different things. So let's say that we wanted to look at a certificate three in business. We look at certificate three in business. That's got a code. So the certificate three in business, the first three characters are the training package that it originally comes from. Number three next to that stands for AQF3 and the AQF is the Australian Qualifications Framework and we can see here that this one has a whole range of units in it and those units when put together come up with a certificate three in business. You don't have to have all of those units. These are just the choices that you can choose. So when you go down the screen further, you will see that it says here qualification description. This qualification, which is a certificate three, reflects a role of individuals in a variety of business services job roles. Uh, individuals in these roles carry out a range of routine procedural, clerical, administrative or operational tasks. So that's indicating, yes, a certificate three is not at a management level, but it's not at your um, first job or baseline operator. It tells you how many units you need to actually gain a whole certificate three. So you need 13 and of those six of them are core and then there's some choices amongst the seven electives. And at the registered training organization, we have to follow the packaging rules. If it tells us we have seven electives and six cores, we can't decide just to use five cores and eight electives. We have to follow what it says. Otherwise, the qualification will be invalid. And sometimes, especially in big training packages, there can be specializations. And so we can see here there are these different specializations. And then we see the core units, which has to be there, and then the electives. Now you can't click on these. This is just information for you to look at. You can click on the previous part of the um, training.gov.au website, but this part is just telling you what the story is around um, clustering together those units that make up a qualification. Okay. You can download this as well if you want. Now the other thing is, let's go back a screen, that you can get a what you might call a, a mini qualification which is a skill set. And a skill set is not quite as big as a whole qualification. It's a little cluster of units which when put together just covers a specific little niche area or a little uh, specific specialization from the training package. So we see here that the skill set has its own code as well. So the skill set starts with BSB, which is the origination of the where the training package um, first contained this skill set, which is business services. After that, there is not a number that indicates AQF level. There is an SS that stands for skill set. And then we have the uh, numbering, which just illustrates the uh, identifying number for that skill set. It doesn't 
have any meaning in terms of its um, uh, difficulty level or anything like that. So let's say we wanted to look up, say, customer service. There's a little skill set about customer service. So instead of doing a whole certificate three, you could, if you wanted to, do a customer service skill set if it was offered by the registered training organization. So it has this code and within that customer service skill set, there are four units of competency. There's two, business, and in the middle of the code, it says ops, which stands for operations, and then there's a three, which stands for certificate three, and then there's number four and number five, which indicates merely that they're um, the fourth and fifth item. And there are also two other units that come from, that originally came from uh, the retail training package. And that starts with SIR. So sometimes units can originally start in one training package, but are allowed to be included in other training packages. So it's, it's fine to have those there. So if we look at that skill set, we see that if you got those four units, if you attended and achieved success with those units, you would get a skill set uh, piece of paper rather than a qualification. So we see that sort of information there. Okay, now let's say though that we wanted to look at units and I know that you'll be probably if you're looking at this in relation to some assessment work that you need to do for design, delivery or assessment, you'll be wanting to look up a unit of competency. So when you look up a unit of competency, you can just start with the units if you want to, but you'll notice there's a lot of them. So the units in business, there are 403 of them. So you could just scroll through page by page, quite a few pages, and just see one that takes your fancy. Or you could use a search term in the search box up here or you could this is what I recommend you could consider well what level would I probably be looking at for my intended audience for my for my purpose whether I'm designing learning or assessment uh, or looking at foundation skills which one should I choose so generally we choose the lower level ones uh, unless we've got a specific reason for a, a higher one so that we just have a little bit less uh, work to do in terms of um, unpacking the the units which make up the qualification. So I might then say choose a certificate three in business. But why don't we first of all just have a look at maybe I'll just go back and have a little look at training packages. If you are wanting to find out more about training packages, you can find out about that at ASQA. Now ASQA is the Australian Skills Quality Authority. That's our national regulator. And inside ASQA, there's lots of information, including a YouTube channel and all sorts of really great uh, resources in there. So I would bookmark that one if I was you and have a look at that. It's got the standards guide. It's got all sorts of things in there, but it also tells you about training packages and what's going on in the world of training package development and various things. So that's a handy one to have. Okay. Uh, and I've already mentioned companion volumes. I've got one example here, companion volume that goes also with training packages. I've just downloaded this one here, the public safety training package, and we can see the sorts of things that it tells you about in a companion volume implementation guide. It talks about versions, skill sets, uh, key features, pathways, uh, various bits of advice that the team have put together. So that's an example there. Okay, but back to training.gov.au. So as I mentioned before, you can search by via a few different means. One way is you can just search from the home page. It can be a little bit frustrating that way. That's why I generally counsel that you go by qualification. But if you are thinking to yourself, I know that I definitely want to do something about 
say, interacting with people, whether that's as a health provider or a service provider or a retail assistant or whoever it might be. So you could look up, say, something like perhaps client. I'm going to put current and I'm going to force it to only show me units of competency. So I just want to look at units of competency which have the word client in their title. So this means any of the training packages, and there are 37 of them at this stage, and they all have many qualifications. So there could be quite a lot of these. Let's have a look and see. Okay, uh, address client needs. Assess and advise on, on client security needs client massage, client movement. So you can see by the characters at the beginning which training package it comes from. That'll give you a little bit of an idea. And you'll see uh, that if we scroll through, you can see some of these ones. Uh, client relations. So you can sort of look around and see what you're looking for there if you wanted to go that way. Uh, other times people might want to look up something like say patient. If you look up patient you're also going to get dog and cat patients assisting type unit. You can see that there's quite a few with the word assist in here so uh, assist assist clients with medication. That's a fairly uh, popular one among students because HLT HPS 006 assist clients with medication can be used in a few different qualifications. Now this is an example of a unit of competency that doesn't have a number in the middle. So training packages designers can choose whether to have a number in the middle or not with their unit of competencies. So sometimes immediately after the first three characters of the training package there'll be a number. If there is no number then it it means that they haven't uh, anchored it to an AQF level specifically and it's possible that this unit could be part of a couple of different levels of qualifications. So it could be packaged in with a certificate 3 or a certificate 4 or something like that. So let's have a look. Uh, to work out the kind of uh, depth or complexity level you have to have a bit of a look around. So HLT HPS 006 assist clients with medication. So I have a look down here there is a companion volume of course and we see that this unit is found in health but also community services which overlaps with health. We see all of these different qualifications contain this unit assist clients with medication either as a core or an elective. So certificate 3 in basic health care that's probably your lowest level and Diploma of Mental Health or Diploma of Alcohol and Other Drugs. So, and there are also some skill sets which have it as well. So if you were looking to come up with a couple of units, you could go to the skill set. So with one of your assessment tasks, if you're doing the training and assessment with me or with another, another um, registered training organisation team, you will most likely need to be choosing a couple of units of competency. So you can see here that in this assist clients with medication skill set, here are two units. If you get those two units, you'll get this skill set. Recognize healthy body systems and assist clients with medication. And you could go and look at each of those units by clicking on it. And we see that the unit and a unit is equal to one work task. So assisting clients with medication, that's a unit. Assist clients with medication, we can see that it's part of various qualifications and skill sets. And here 
down on the bottom half of this page we'll see the front section of the unit and the back section which is the assessment requirements. We need both of those files. If somebody says to you give me the details of this unit or download the unit it usually means both of these files, the unit and its assessment requirements. So we see here that this unit is really for anyone that needs to uh, prepare and provide medication assistance. And it has elements, which are the major components of the unit, prepare to assist medication, prepare the client, support clients with administration of medication, handle contingencies, complete the medication distribution and documentation. So there's five key areas, which we call elements, and each of the elements has performance criteria, which define whether you have or haven't uh, satisfied that element. So they are numbered like this. Element one has performance criteria one, two, three, four, five. Element two has the six performance criteria, 2.1, blah, 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 and then three, and then four, and then five. We'll see also that there are foundation skills, by which we mean uh, sort of work work life skills so that can include language literacy numeracy and how to cope in the world of employment uh, including digital literacy that sometimes comes in as well in this case it mentions numeracy and reading as important foundation skills then we've got assessment requirements and assessment requirements in addition to what's spelled out in the elements and performance criteria we also have to make sure that the body of things that we're asking people to do to prove that they can indeed do this unit and know what they're doing as well that they can perform in this way provide assistance with medication to five clients five different medications and three different modes so um, different formats like uh, liquid or tablets or um, infusion or something else and then uh, adhere to requirements by following the plan and following those rights and making sure that you know who's who and which dosage you need and when and so on. You also have to prove your knowledge that's up to the trainer and assessor to check that you learned the knowledge in the training and you've been assessed as having the knowledge through the assessment. So we see here, here's all the knowledge that you have to have. And then there's the assess assessment conditions uh, and that talks about uh, the conditions that you're assessed under, whether um, how frequently you have to do something and uh, what sort of facilities or resources you should be supplied with. Okay, so hopefully that's a helpful kind of trip around training.gov.au. I might just perhaps finish up by showing you the AQF, show you through here what you can see in those different levels and you can download that and have a look at that if you want to. Okay, thank you for that. I'm just adding in some information on accredited courses because I realise I left that off. So accredited courses are not that common, but let's say we wanted to look at some accredited courses. What we do, I'm just going to, I know that there are some in health, so I'm just going to immediately go over to health. If I didn't know, I could just search by a whatever search word that I wanted to search and look up to see whether there are any accredited courses that uh, relate to what I'm interested in. So just a brief description of accredited courses. So accredited courses are those which are not yet uh, embedded in fully in a national training package. So accredited courses are designed by uh, organizations, community groups or interest groups who uh, approach their state training authority. So in Victoria that's the VRQA and in Western Australia it's the TAC. Uh, other states have their own training and um, training authority. They've approached their state training authority to say that they'd like to register an accredited course because the area that they're uh, involved in 
they don't feel that it's been covered sufficiently in the current national training package. So you can imagine that we don't really want a lot of accredited courses because uh, having a national training system uh, depends on us all using the national training system and the national training packages. So we've got that mutual recognition. We can use them all around Australia and we should be able to, in most cases, use the existing training packages and then parcel up a qualification um, or a skill set based on the choices that we've already got. But it is certainly the case that sometimes there is a little niche area that hasn't been covered. So the organisation approaches the state training authority and they're the ones that initially uh, grant uh, if they want to, the um, approval for that accredited course to go ahead. And you'll see that because it starts with a number, not a three digit um, start, which we normally see, say with health, it would be HLT or business BSB or finance FNS. So if you see something that starts with a number, it is going to be an accredited course. So let's see what little niche areas have come up in the world of health. So we see here, uh, let me see, uh, indigenous health, uh, ear health, uh, let me see, mental health recovery, allied health tasks, health administration, health and wellness. So there are various uh, little courses. There's also, I'm aware, uh, and I'll test my spelling, anaphylaxis is one, I think. Yes, so in Victoria, there is this course in first aid management of anaphylaxis. So this is where the uh, people involved have said that they need a course just on first aid dealing with anaphylaxis. So when people have a terrible uh, allergic reaction to something like uh, latex or, or seafood or whatever it might be. So if you are looking up something to select to train with for your training and assessment course that you're doing and you come across a, an accredited course, just be a little bit cautious because accredited courses, because they've been designed by a special um, community or organizational group, they are allowed to retain the copyright of that accredited course, unlike with training packages where everything to do with the training package and its units is uh, viewable on training.gov.au. There's limited uh, information that can be seen with accredited courses. So uh, let me see, if we clicked on this one, course in first aid management of anaphylaxis, this is what you typically see. You'll see it says accredited course details. Uh, then when you're looking down, you don't see a lot of other information. So we can see in this case, this was uh, first came up in Vic. It's called the course in first aid management of anaphylaxis and the people to contact about that are people uh, in the department and looks like the learning products department. And when we look at the course details, we see that it has a couple of different modules in it. So usually these are called modules rather than units. And when we click on them, we see that it says no records to display because no attachments, because the people that wrote the uh, accredited course are allowed to retain their copyright of it and they don't have to share all their information on training.gov.au. So generally speaking, I wouldn't advise using an accredited course because the details that you need, such as how the module is laid out and it's, you know, elements, performance criteria and so on, you can't see them unless you get in contact with the owner of that copyright and track them down and they respond to you and there's a lot of chasing up to do. So your assignment might be due for um, submission and you haven't got the details yet. But there is a little bit of good news and that is that in Victoria, which I'm really glad to see, in Victoria the state government has put 
all of the accredited courses on the state uh, government website. So in this case, it isn't such a bad news. So if you do choose one that has Vic in its uh, numeric title, you will be able to find it. So you'll come over to here to www.vic.gov.au backslash department accredited vet courses and you'll scroll down and it says here these are accredited vocational education and training courses that the department by which we're talking about state department has developed uh, in consultation with whoever it was that applied for them so when we look down here we see business we see this we see that we see service and we see community services and there are also other ones further down so if we wanted to look up that one about uh, anaphylaxis there's asthma this one we click on it and glad to see we can actually download that information so we can download it in word it does look a bit different to what a training package normally looks like but it's very very similar so although it doesn't have the exact same layout it is still uh, recognized on training.gov.au even though it first originated in a state or territory it still can be used as part of the vet sector it's just that it's just laid out a little bit differently and uh, it has been uh, authorized by the originating state so if you were looking up this uh, accredited course the accredited course has various modules in it and we can see when we're looking through it that it gives information here's the name of the qualification which is basically accredited course in first aid management of anaphylaxis four hours why are we doing it what's the story with all of this and then it will tell you about the various uh, modules and we see in here takes a bit to get through uh, we see by going through there are units provide first aid management of anaphylaxis and develop risk minimization and risk management strategies for anaphylaxis and we'll see that they are similar but not exactly the same in terms of its layout so it might look the same but it's a little bit different but uh, no, nothing major okay so probably the main one is at the end here in the second document that describes the assessment uh, conditions and criteria they use the term required skills whereas these days we would say well in national training packages anyway we say uh, performance evidence and down here it will say required knowledge whereas we would say knowledge evidence but it's pretty minor okay so that's what that's all about so yes you can choose it but if you choose one that doesn't have Vic in its title you may be hard-pressed to find it uh, and when you're answering questions such as which training package does it come from you'd have to say no this doesn't come from a training package which is the qualification that it slots into you'll have to write this slots into an accredited course and if it comes up with unit title you might have to include either unit or module title so all of your answers will be just a little bit different if you've used an accredited course okay that's it thanks